Plenty going on. Our political editor, Andrew Clonell, going through it. So GDP figures out today. What's the expectation here, Andrew, politically? Well, Jim Chalmers seems to have a bit of luck about him. I wouldn't be surprised if it's just in positive territory, 0.1 or 0.2. That's probably where the government actually wants it. They'd never admit it, but they want to see inflation come down. That's the only way. If it's negative, that'll spell real trouble. No matter what happens, Angus Taylor, the Shadow Treasurer, will be saying it's a per capita recession. And if it wasn't for immigration, we'd basically be in recession. But the government needs the economy to slow. So do all of us mortgage holders. It's about the degree. Negative territory would be bad news indeed. But we've seen a lot of insolvencies. We've seen it's a very difficult time for the economy. And as much as the opposition's hammered some blows away at Andrew Giles and the like, Matt Keogh yesterday, in terms of the competence of the government, this is the main game come the next election, Pete. This is what puts the opposition in the game, the relatively poor state of the economy and the strain that people are under at the moment. Do you think there will be a move towards that now, more of a move towards that? What do you mean? From the opposition? Yeah, well, even... I mean, it was an interesting piece. I think it was Simon Benson this morning saying, right, OK, Giles is still, a, you know, a big topic and, uh, and, and Dutton has certainly dined out on that for the last week and a half or so, but is there... Might there be a, a move now to bread and butter issues that are affecting most Australians, i.e. the cost of living? Is that, is that where the conversation heads today? Well... You'd hope so or you'd think so. I thought that should have happened when the inflation figure was out, but who knows with the opposition tactics. And, look, I think they see Jim Chalmers as a very strong parliamentary performer and they don't want to uh, bowl to him, basically. Mm. So that's one of the reasons they stay off the economy there. They, mm. they see a scalp coming in Andrew Giles. Yeah, OK. But you'd have to ask a question about it if it's negative, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, yeah, no, look, I mean, uh, it's a big figure. The inflation monthly figure was even bigger in my book and they didn't even touch it. You made an interesting point yesterday in your afternoon show, which I love, um, but you mentioned that Bill Shorten, <laughs> you know, could possibly be a good Home Affairs Minister. Is it, I mean, is that, is that your view or is there a bit of chatter about that? No, that's my view. I think well, I the think PM's view idea. is he should stay in it. Uh, yeah, well, thanks. I'm, you know, I am known to get them now and then. But the PM's, <laughs> PM's, uh, the PM's view, I think, is he should stay in NDIS and fix that mess. So I guess you can't have him fixing all messes. Bill Shorten or Jason Clare? They'll both yeah. hate me after this. I'll probably get some texts. I think they're the <laughs> ones who could be circuit breakers in yeah. a, a home affairs style area. Um, you need someone of that seniority and experience who was around in the last government who knows how to get on top of bureaucrats and really test them. And that, that in particular is shortened, I think, because they're not getting the right advice from that department and Andrew Giles seems all at sea. Uh, and if you can't control your department, well, you can't yeah. control the immigration no. system of this country and uh, that is a real problem for the government. The PM ends up suffering really badly and surely he doesn't want that. But I think it's midwinter break time. I, I'd, I'd have that at $1.00. One that uh, Home Affairs and Immigration change hands about then and maybe we see a couple of retirements. Well, that's Winks odds there. Look, you know, and that's a good point too. Maybe maybe Bill Shorten's got to see these issues through on a day when we're talking about, you know, money that's being used or a percentage of the NDIS funding that's being used for drugs, hard drugs, cars, holidays, etc. It's all pretty bad reading. I don't think Bill Shorten's ever going to get an easy job under Anthony Albanese. He'll always have a mess to clean up. So whether it's this one or, or could it be home affairs, we'll see. OK. Andrew Clonell, good to see you as always. We will talk to you again soon. Andrew's coverage here on Sky throughout the day.